David Platt is a well-known preacher, author, and speaker who is known for his strong faith in global missions and the gospel. His whole life's work has been to push for a deeper knowledge of faith, discipleship, and social justice. He has inspired many people and groups all over the world. This paper talks about Platt's childhood, his education, and the core ideas that have shaped his ministry. David Platt was born in Birmingham, Alabama on July 11th, 1979. He was raised in a Christian home, which gave him a strong knowledge of the faith. People taught Platt about the Bible and Christian beliefs from a very young age. Uh, this set the stage for his spiritual journey. He became devoted to Christ when he was young, which changed the way he saw the world and inspiring him to serve the church for the rest of his life. Platt knew he was called to ministry, so he went to college to get ready for the difficulties of being a pastoral leader. Getting his bachelor's degree at the University of Georgia was his goal. His time at university not only helped him learn more, but it also gave him the chance to interact with people who had different thoughts and points of view. He learned more about the world and the role of faith in solving problems in society through this experience. After Platt finished his undergraduate studies, he went to the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary to continue his study. He first got a Master of Divinity here and then a Doctor of Philosophy in Theology. His rigorous academic study gave him a strong background in theology and and a deep knowledge of the ideas in the Bible. The things Platt learned in school helped him a lot as he prepared to speak, teach, and guide other people on their spiritual paths. When David Platt was a preacher, he cared a lot about making disciples and sending people to other countries. He became the leader of the Brook Hills Church in Birmingham, Alabama in 2006. That would make it possible for a government to change things. The church grew a lot under his guidance and it became known for putting a lot of passion into living out the Christian faith in deep and meaningful ways. When David Platt was asked to lead the church at Brook Hills in 2006, he began his time there. From the start, Platt's goal was to build a group of followers, especially with a focus on real teaching and a dedication to missions around the world. The church grew a lot under his leadership, both in terms of the number of members and the impact it had in the wider Christian community. Platt set up a number of programs and projects that were meant to get church members involved in useful ways. He said that Bible readings in small groups were very important encouraging people in the congregation to learn more about the Bible and get to know each other better. This focus on community created a space where people felt free to live out their faith in an honest way. Platt's dedication to missions also turned Brook Hills into a center for reaching out to people around the world. He encouraged people in the church to take part in mission work, both in their own country and around the world. The church got its members involved in important social problems like poverty, education, and healthcare by working with missionaries and groups from all over the world. Not only did this hands-on method increase the church's reach, but it also strengthened people's faith as they saw firsthand how serving others can change things. Platt wrote Radical and put it out in 2010. Many Christians would really connect with the book, Taking Back Your Faith from the American Dream. In Radical, Platt questions the common idea of the American Dream and what it means for Christians. He says that seeking comfort and material things can take Christians' attention away from their real job, which is to follow Christ and make followers. The book asks people to think about what it means to be a student, stressing that having real faith often means making sacrifices and getting out of your comfort zone. Radical had an effect that went far beyond when it was published. It started a movement of Christians who wanted to live out their faith in a real way, and it made people talk about what it means to be a disciple in a world that is focused on buying things. Many people got involved in mission work because Platt stressed the church's global purpose. Whether it's through prayer, giving money, or doing service work themselves. Because of what he does at the church at Brook Hills and what he writes in Radical, Platt is a major voice in the discussion about the church's place in modern society. He disagrees with the idea that faith should be easy and comfy. Instead, he supports a radical, selfless way of being a disciple who want a faith that isn't just about getting what they want, but also about loving God and helping other people. Also, Platt's focus on missions fits with how the church is becoming more aware of how important it is to deal with world problems like poverty, injustice, and human trafficking. By pushing for a complete knowledge of the gospel, he helps Christians see how their faith is linked to everything else in the world. Not only does this point of view change people's lives, it could also change the lives of whole groups and countries. David Platt was named president of the International Mission Board, MB, in 2014. This was a very important position that gave him the power to shape the future of global missions in the Southern Baptist Convention and beyond.
He has been very dedicated to involving the church more in global missions and has spoken out strongly for social justice problems. David Platt knew right away that the IMB needed to be re-energized when he took over because it had been having trouble with funding and participation in the past. He wanted to get the EMB back on track with the Great Commission. Making it clear how important it is for churches to work together to follow Christ's command to make disciples of all countries, Platt led in a way that made church members want to be involved in God's mission by inspiring them and giving them the tools they needed. Platt started a number of projects to expand the AMB's reach. It was one of his main goals to get Southern to send out more missions trying to get a new group of Christians to answer the call to missions. The IMB focused more on unreached people groups while he was in charge because they knew they needed to share the word with those who hadn't heard it yet. By putting these groups first, Platt told churches to think about the whole world and to take seriously their duty to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Platt tried to improve the training and support given to missionaries on the field as well as hiring more of them. He stressed how important it was to have thorough training programs for missionaries that would give them the skills and cultural awareness they need to work well with a wide range of groups. He did this to make the EMBs work more successful and to make sure that missionaries were ready to deal with the tough problems they might have to deal with. Platt was focused on traditional missions, but while he was at the IMB, he became a strong voice for social justice problems. He stressed how important it was to care for the disadvantaged and oppressed, knowing that the gospel must be paired with a commitment to social action. The way Platt saw things was based on a full view of the gospel that includes both spiritual growth and and useful help for people who need it. As Platt challenged the church to be a voice for the powerless, he told Christians to deal with problems like poverty, human trafficking, and unfairness. He stressed that the church's job is not just to spread the gospel, but also to show Christ's love through acts of kindness and care urged churches to work together with neighborhood and local groups to solve important problems, making the gospel real in the real world. David Platt's work as head of the IMB and his support for social justice have big effects on the church and its purpose. His way of doing things questions old ideas about missions and encourages the church to do more than just evangelism, but also in attempts to ease suffering and fix problems that are caused by the system. People who follow Platt's ideas about holistic ministry are encouraged to see their religion as a call to love and serve both God and neighbor. Many Christians, especially younger Christians who care more about social justice problems connect with Platt's vision. Many people are thinking about how their religion fits in with what he wrote, he deals with problems like poverty, unfairness, and trafficking of people. Platt wants the church to stay relevant and responsive to the needs of the world while staying true to its purpose by addressing these issues. David Platt is a very popular preacher and leader at the International Mission Board, EMB. He is also a very popular speaker and writes a lot. Uh, Platt stresses how important it is to be real in the Christian life and encourages people to live their faith in a way that follows what Christ taught. He talks about important problems the church is having right now, like materialism, the call to serve, and how important it is to start global missions right away. Platt can inspire and motivate people to take their religion seriously because he can connect with them on a personal level and take part in the world around them. Platt wrote a book called Follow Me, A Call to Die, A Call to Live in 2013. It's about being a follower and how to accept the cost of following Christ. He disagrees with the idea of a comfortable, consumer-driven faith and tells Christians that to be a true disciple, they need to be ready to make sacrifices and take up their cross. Platt says that following Jesus means completely changing your priorities. Instead of seeking comfort, you should resolve to help others and spread the gospel. Young people really connect with this message. A lot of them are looking for a faith that is both intellectually strong and changes their everyday lives. In her 2019 book, A World of Urgency, Platt talks about the world's pressing needs and asks readers to do something about them. The book is based on Platt's experiences on a trip through the Himalayas, where he saw for himself how hard it is for poor people to live in oppressive societies. He thinks about how different the lives of many Christians in the West are from the hard lives of millions of people around the world. Platt wants a big change in how people think. He tells believers that it is their duty to deal with world problems and that their faith should push them to act. This piece of writing shows how much he cares about social justice and how faith needs to be shown in real life. A lot of people in the Christian community, especially younger people, have been affected by David Platt's work. People who are unhappy with the way things are and want to know more about their beliefs can relate to his focus on real faith, teaching, and social justice. Platt's writings make people think about their comfort zones and encourage them to get involved with spiritual and social problems. 
David Platt has a huge impact on people's lives and is deeply committed to social justice, world missions, and making disciples. Justice for everyone, Platt has had many public successes, but he has also been through a lot of personal problems and tragedies that have tried his faith and strength. The problems with his family, especially his adopted daughter's health, have been one of the hardest things for him. This paper talks about the personal problems that Platt and his wife Heather have had and how it changed the way their family worked. David Platt and his wife Heather adopted a girl who had a cleft lip and palate when she was born. People born with this condition often need multiple treatments and ongoing medical care. Making the choice to adopt had its own good and bad points, but their daughter's health problems made things even more difficult for the whole family. The Platt family had to deal with the fact that their daughter would need many surgeries. They had to plan for the surgeries and get ready emotionally as well. Parents were worried about the risks and the pain their child would feel during each surgery, which made them feel unsure and scared. These kinds of events can be very hard on the emotions, especially for parents who care a lot about their kids' well-being. This trip has not only put their faith to the test, but it has also shown them how vulnerable being a parent can be. David and Heather Platt have been deeply affected by the health problems of their daughter. To deal with the stress and anxiety that come with their daughter's medical needs, they have had to lean on each other and their support networks. They probably got strength from their faith and found comfort in prayer along the way and, and the help of the people in their church. The Platt family has been able to connect with other people who are going through similar things by talking about their problems and experiences in public. By being open about their problems, They've helped families dealing with health problems with their kids feel like they're part of a group. These kinds of honest feelings can give hope to others who may feel alone in there. To let them know that they are not going through this journey alone, David Platt has kept up with his preaching and outreach work, even though he has been going through some tough times in his personal life. He probably has a better understanding of pain and resilience because of the times he has been a father dealing with health problems. These kinds of personal problems can help a pastor connect to people who are having a hard time offering a greater sense of understanding and kindness. The things that happened in Platt's family have also made him care about social justice and world missions. He knows how complicated health gaps can be and how important it is to speak up for people who are weak like kids with medical needs. He doesn't just talk about wanting social fairness, it comes from his own life events. As a father who has had a hard time getting care and help for his child, Platt has lost a number of close friends and mentors over the course of his career. Each of these people was an important part of his spiritual and professional growth. Not only have these losses caused a lot of pain, but they have also made me think about myself and grow. Each death has given us a chance to make a choice that forced Platt to face the truths of death and the shortness of life. Losing friends and teachers can be very hard on the emotions. According to Platt, these ties were more than just business. These close relationships formed his faith and helped him understand God's will for his life. When someone important in your life dies, it's common to wonder what your life was all about. Leaving a memory and how one's life has affected other people, Platt's losses have probably made him think about how important his connections are, the memories they give him, and the lessons he can learn from them. Platt's losses have made him think about how short life is and how important it is to live with purpose. He has stressed in his lessons and writings how important it is to remember that life is short. And each second is important. In his call for people to have a bold faith that wants to change the world, this point of view fits in. The way Platt thinks about death makes us realize that we shouldn't take life for granted. The losses of friends and teachers have probably made him more focused on what's important love and service. He knows that the effect someone has on others can last a long time after they die and change lives and leave behind memories. When you understand this, you may value the people in your life more deeply and decide to put more effort into your interactions. David Platt's losses have also made him realize how important it is to put effort into partnerships. Platt encourages people to make conscious connections with each other in a world that is busy and full of distractions. He knows that making relationships that matter takes time, work, and being open. This is reflected in his focus on discipleship and community in the church, where he urges Christians to build real relationships that help them grow spiritually and give them support. It is often seen as a calling that gives people meaning, desire, and deep satisfaction. It does, however, come with its own problems and stresses that can be very hard on mental and emotional health. David Platt has been open about the mental and emotional problems that come with being a boss. He is looking for help because of the stress of work and problems in his personal life and with his family and support from his village and other Christians. There are many ways that the stresses of being a leader can show up, making you feel alone, burned out, and anxious. 
A lot of pastors, including Platt, have found it hard to meet the standards of their congregation, the church as a whole, and even themselves. Ken doubts about how well he can lead others. As part of their job, pastoral care workers often have to deal with tough problems like grief, conflict, and moral failings in the church community. And seeing other people's pain and problems can be hard on your emotions because leaders may have to carry the loads of the people they serve. His work with the marginalized makes his mission even more complicated because he has to deal with systemic problems as well as the emotional effects of his work. David Platt has been through personal and family problems that have added to his mental and emotional problems. These problems are on top of the stresses of his work. The health problems his adopted daughter has, which require several surgeries, have caused him and his family a lot of stress. Dealing with these problems can be hard on any parent's emotions. Platt's love for his family can make him feel even more responsible in his job as a leader. David Platt has stressed how important it is for him to get support and encouragement from his community and other Christians because he knows how hard pastoral service can be on the mind and the emotions. He knows that leaders don't have to go through hard times by themselves. Instead, they can get stronger and heal through relationships in their church and the community as a whole. By being honest about his problems, Platt serves as a strong example for other leaders and churchgoers. By talking about his own problems, he inspires others to be open about their own mental and emotional problems. By getting people in the church to help and understand each other, this openness can help break down the stigma that surrounds mental health problems in faith groups, making it safer for people to get help without worrying about being judged. Also, the fact that Platt was willing to get help from other Christians shows how important society is for healing. Through asking for help, leaders can find support and friendship, which helps them remember that they are not the only ones going through hard times. This link can help them feel like they belong and give them useful tools for dealing with the problems they face. His journey shows that David Platt has stayed true to his calling, even when he faced big problems at work and in his personal life. His stories of loss, battle, and strength have given him the tools to inspire and support other people in their faith. Platt's support for global missions and disciples shows how important faith is in getting through hard times. You he reminds Christians that being a true disciple often means leaving comfort zones and interacting with the world. As Platt's influence on the Christian community grows, his life is a source of hope for people who are dealing with their own problems. In the end, David Platt left behind a legacy of strength, faith, and a never-ending quest of God's mission in a world that needs hope and healing so badly.